Welcome. This is Asha Jadeja from the Motwani Foundation. Uh, I'm here to uh, launch Global India Dialogues at uh, Davos 2024. And uh, I'm here with an old friend of mine, Skandar Hundal, who has been a serial entrepreneur in my book and somebody who I've held in high regard on all things art and technology. So, uh, Skandar, um, welcome to the Global India Dialogues, and uh, tell us a little bit, give, uh, give us about one minute about yourself, and then we can plunge into the uh, conversation. Well, thank you for inviting me, Asha, to your new forum here. It's really, really powerful and really, really interesting, all the networks you're bringing together. And that's pretty much what I'm into, is about building and bringing new generation networks together, um, but working in an intergenerational way, so that the dialogue and wisdom of what was is still relevant. So the ancestral histories that we have in this modern day connect and create meaningful creative expression between our communities and across the world. So I work in 200 territories across the world as the global art director for British Council. I'm also the chair of a cultural leadership board with the mayor of um, West Midlands, Andy Street. And so our role is very much about building trading opportunity between creatives, building creative industries, providing livelihoods, and the most important thing is impacting on the world in a positive way that brings um, forth a more sustainable, happier, smiley planet. That's, 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 you know, that's what we all need right now. That's what the doctor has ordered for this century, uh, Skinder. But I want to ask you a question about... Um, I see, you know, I, when, I, when, I, when I go for these auctions and all that in the U.S., I see paintings selling for $60 million and $80 million and so on, right, for, you know, you know some big names. Um, I'm curious as to why is it that we are not seeing that much Indian art on the global market right now? Is, is, it, is, it, is it because it's sort of a new entrant in the, in the global art scene? What is going on? Why is it that we still have paintings, you know, uh, some of our top painters selling for less than six million, and uh, you know, so that is what what is what's going on there, and uh, is is there, you know, do you see, do you see, and you know, and I I want to know from you actually the effort that we can all make in bringing some of these artists out into the world, and how do we enable them to have more visibility in in the West because that's where the markets are. Well, you've, you've put nail on the head. I think visibility is the big thing. You look at this promenade in Davos. I think there's about four or five Indian pavilions um, really dominating, coming forth, though, with great um, passion and ideas. I think there's, 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 there's so much, there's an infinite supply of creativity in India. Earlier, we heard from Neelam, um, from industry, talking about um, millions of um, artisans um, who are trying to make a living. Um, but that creativity is, comes back from a whole root of sort of traditions that have been passed on. I think the marketplace is a funny, funny one. Um, it is about visibility, it's about profile, it's about brand, it's about association, it's about who represents you, and it's also about the power from within. So what is the Indian art market doing in terms of its positioning? Mm -hmm. So those that position, so for example, the Samdani family from Bangladesh in Dhaka have positioned themselves very closely and associate themselves with places like the Freeze Art Market in London. In so doing, they're attracting partnerships that then they bring back to Bangladesh through the Dhaka Art Summit. Now, that starts to build those collaborations and relations, and I think that's what it's... Say a bit more, uh, Skandar, say a bit more about this. This is a very important point that you're raising about this one family, right? Yeah. That are, they're building... What are they doing in London exactly? What, when you say they're building presence, what exactly... Is it, uh, are they at the auctions... Are they in the museums? What are you seeing there? Because that's something that a lot of Indian families can, can sort of follow, right? Something like that. Yes, I, th I think there is a kind of, sometimes there is this um, mindset where one feels that one has to get validation from the West. Mm -hmm. So one has to be associated with the West. Well, it's true that the markets are here. You're right. The big money that creates value is from existing systems, which say do not um, are not as mature, say, as in India. So you're going to go with mature markets that then position yourself. So the big families like the Samdanis um, see the value of art and culture in terms of providing not only 
um, great, beautiful experiences, but also occupations, creativity for communities, well-being for, for communities. So the Dhaka Art Summit isn't only about you know, the presence of Western curators in Bangladesh. It's also about activating citizens of their location. So when, when we're talking about you know, building art ecologies and you're, you're seeing people create an exchange, it has to be done on a mutual, mutual sensibility. But if your mindset is going, say, into the West thinking that you've got something that that you can that you've got that you want to take from there and and not give that exchange won't actually create the high value mm -hmm. so the high value comes from actually understanding and being confident about, uh, confident about your own traditions and your own kind of um, styles and ways of um, presenting the work mm -hmm. i think that that is something that w we could do a lot more with okay you know, there used to be a time when, uh, uh, when I started collecting. This was 2002, two, year 2000 or 2002, around that time frame, you know. And I still remember we would go to these auction houses, Christie's and Sotheby's in New York, and, you know, run into these, uh, these auctions of, of, you know, sort of older Indian artists like Tayyab Mehta and so on. And maximum these works would go for like, over like a million or so. And Tayyab was 90 at that point. But I'm seeing a change now. I am seeing that there is there in the auctions the people are are uh, you know are bidding now from multiple from multi, from multiple sectors. You will have chi the Chinese and the Japanese mm -hmm. uh, you know bidders coming in and investing in Indian art. So this is changing. This that's for sure. Uh, are you seeing that in in UK? Are you seeing that in UK or in the European art ecosystem? You know, you, you'll see tr various trends and waves mm -hmm. come forth. I mean, the Serpentine did a big show called Indian Highway mm -hmm. back 15 odd years ago and during that period there was there was this energy that was looking to India mm -hmm. as oh look what the Indian contemporary art scene is doing mm -hmm. and that started to, to create a bit of a wave now to sustain that wave is a lot of effort mm -hmm. um, and the sort of validation of the curatorial circle is really important, the institutional circle within the kind of um, the power of contemporary art. And as soon as they are on site and we're seeing more of those artists mm -hmm. profiled and positioned within those institutions mm -hmm. and those curatorial narratives, that's when the value starts to go up. Mm -hmm. So somebody like Rashid Rana from Pakistan, for right. example, is represented by Listen Gallery. Right. And that's a big gallery to be that's represented. By. It's so, just like uh, uh, yeah. Anish. Yeah, so Anish, Anish Kapoor. Anish Kapoor. Listen, listen well, gallery, right? I should have started with Anish yeah. if we're talking about India. Yeah. Um, because Anish Kapoor has been with Listen prior to, to Rashid. I only mention Rashid because I presented him in my gallery. Yeah. But Anish Kapoor is, is probably the, the kind of legendary yeah. example of one of the big names that studied in India, right. came to the UK, and is, is one of the, you know, the big names you know, in probably the you know the top top one hundred for contemporary artists, if not higher. Right. Um, so so Anish again, he had a strong education. He had the strong connection with Listen Gallery, and in mm -hmm. terms of his positioning, mm -hmm. of course he's a genius. Of course he works hard, um, but it is about who represents you in the end mm -hmm. that creates market value. Uh, but it's also about who writes about you and how you talk and speak about your That's work. That's right. So it is about marketing also, right? Yes, for sure. It's communications, marketing, the packaging, the PR, and so on. Well, there's, there's three things to get right. Right. The one make is, an artist. Yes, yeah. for sure. The three, for me, the three things are, is have you got um, an aesthetic, a signature that's distinct in terms of your form, mm -hmm but also the context and knowledge you bring to the table. The second thing is how you communicate and engage audiences, but also critics and stakeholders within the business. So the third thing is the management of your stakeholders. Yes. Now, an artist, you haven't got time to do all that. Yes. So you've got to focus on your work. You've yes. got to work on, on your aesthetic, your form, your context, your knowledge. You've got to have a team around you to do the marketing, the social media positioning, and 
the stakeholder management. And that's why a great gallery can elevate you and transform you. A good example is an artist I used to work with, John Eckenfrau, who's now doing the British Pavilion, and I'm the commissioner for that this year, actually, so I'm really excited. So in Venice. Congratulations, yeah. Thank you very much. It's a big thing. And this I'm the first person of colour yes. and the first Indian and Punjabi to do it, ever. My goodness, that's amazing. So, so it's there a nice, there's a nice yeah. historical moment. And maybe when on the steps of the pavilion, I'll, 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 sh I'll shout out for the Indians whilst I'm there. Um, but, but what I'm saying about John was that once it was picked up by Listen Gallery, it, it's a transformation, in, not only in terms of the opportunities, but the income the artist also ascertains. But the most important thing is the value of his work has gone up. Yes, of so, course, yeah. So you, you were absolutely right about, mm -hmm. about positioning and about you know, amplification. Yeah. But an artist hasn't got time to do that themselves unless they have a machine behind them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Skandar, we see, you know, willy-nilly there's been an export of Indian soft power, right? You have yoga, you know, now trickling. Not, tr I mean, it's taken over in the, in the, you know, in terms of exercise and meditation, and you know, in the West. Uh, do you see art uh, taking on that level of uh, of sort of cultural, you know, osmosis that can happen? Because India is already so, you know, so far ahead on on things like yoga and meditation. Do you see art kind of as the next wave? That could, uh, you know, that could that could increase some of India's soft power in the West. One hundred percent, if not a thousand percent. I mean, if you think about the power of yoga, well-being, cuisine, or whether it's um, popular means of, you know, things like your Bhangra and Punjabi music that's kind of featured into urban sound, these are kind of scratching on the surface, actually. Yeah, because some of the some of the some of the I mean. There's no doubt, there's, there's a huge spectrum of art and tradition from India that's probably unknown. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge stereotype yeah. across the world about what is Indian. Mm -hmm. um, I always believe that art is the most powerful communicator mm -hmm. in terms of looking at what emotion and feeling knowledge has. Because that leads to a form of wisdom and behavior yeah. and thought about one another. And that respect grows. And I think the more we can position the art, mm -hmm. the more we have a, a closer association between ourselves because it starts to reveal who we really are. And it makes us think about the world we are, are in, 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 in a new perspective, in a new light. Yeah. I always think that artists are the kind of soothsayers of the future mm -hmm. as much as they can fold time to, to earlier ancestral knowledge. Yes. So I think you're right, Asha. This is the moment. This is the moment. You know, because India's rocking and rolling right now. No, no, and you are in the, you know, at the right time and the right place, uh, Skandar. So, uh, listen, thank you so much for these words of wisdom <laughs> and something that is probably going to go into the art world now, this uh, conversation that you and I have had. And uh, I think it's the beginning of a journey for people like us, right? Some of us are collectors, some of us are curators. We get together and sort of think about what is the soft power kind of going to look like going forward as, as India joins the global, you know, the global ecosystem. So thank you, uh, Skandar, and uh, stay in touch. Thank you.